In this video, we'll look at the SketchUp interface. When you first open SketchUp, you'll need to choose a template. These are the default templates that you can choose from. We'll use Architectural Inches. I've, I've already clicked on that. But if you want to change the template, just click on another. SketchUp will open to the same template each time until you choose a different one here. When you open SketchUp for the first time, this is what you'll see. Up here, there are menu bars. These are toolbars. This is the Getting Started toolbar. If you grab the dots, you can undock a toolbar. Double click on it to redock it, and you can drag it wherever you want. This toolbar takes you to the warehouses and to layout, and also you can manage whatever extensions you're using here. This toolbar is the Scan Essentials one, and it is for reality capture imports. That is, when you scan a building or an object, you can bring it in and edit with this. We aren't going to be using this, so I'm going to close it. That's how you close any toolbar. You can always go to View, Toolbars, and bring it back. Here you can see all the other toolbars that there are. I like to work with the Views toolbar open. I just double-clicked to dock it. With the Standard toolbar, because this has undo and redo and save on it. I'm going to double click to dock it. And I also like to work with the large tool set open. I'm going to arrange this a little. While this is open, you can also move the position of the individual icons. Once you close it, you can't do that anymore. Over here, we have the trays, the entity info, the materials, and more. The instructor tray gives you a tutorial on whatever tool is highlighted. You can turn a tray off by clicking the X. You might inadvertently turn off a tray you didn't mean to turn off. So just go to Window, Default Tray, and click whatever tray you turned off back on. You can also manage trays here. This is the scale figure. It gives you an idea of the size of whatever you're drawing because you don't have to input numbers when you model. You can just eyeball sizes. For instance, I'm going to click on the rectangle, click here, and you can see in the dimensions box the size that the square is. When the square has a certain proportion, a pop-up will appear telling you what that proportion is, such as golden section. I can type the size that I want the square to be, and I don't have to click in the dimensions box. I can just type it. 
I'm going to type 10 foot symbol, comma, 10 foot symbol, and then enter. If I don't type the foot symbol, it will default to inches. That is, it would be 10 inches by 10 inches. If I want to immediately change the dimensions, I can, as long as I haven't clicked anything on the keyboard, on the keyboard or the mouse. For example, I can type 20 foot, 20 foot, enter, and it will resize. But again, once I start moving it and changing tools, I can't do that anymore. Hover over each tool to get a pop-up telling you what that tool is. I'm going to click Undo to get rid of the square. These are the axes, and you want to model parallel to them. For example, I'm clicking on the pencil, and if I click here, you can see the line is green, and that means I'm parallel to the green axes. If the line is black, it means I'm not parallel to any axes. So I can click, and now I'm parallel to the red axes. And this is an inference point, meaning I can hover over it, then carefully move back. And when the line is green, I've drawn another line the same distance as the first line. So I'll click and click. I like to work with the selection tool activated when I'm not actively modeling. This is a face. It has a front and a back, and they are different colors. You know you have a face when you click on it and you see all these dots. That means it's highlighted and you can edit it. If you don't have a face, it will look like that. And you need to make a face to be able to do anything with it. If you're missing a face, sometimes you can just trace a line and that will create one. If you want to make sure that you're drawing parallel to an axis, you can hold an arrow key down. For example, I'm drawing parallel to the blue axis, but if I hold the up arrow key down, it's locked to that axis, and I'll need to press and release that arrow to release the lock. Here I'm holding the left arrow key, and that locks me parallel to the green axis. And I can't move anywhere else until I press and release that button again. There's an inference telling me the second line is the same length as the first. And I'll complete the face. This is push-pull, and if I pull this up, I get a volume. If I draw on this plane, I've separated the two, the faces. As you can see, they will move independently of each other. Click once to select a face. Click twice to select a face and its edges. Click three times to select all connected edges. As you can see, the whole thing selected. So I cannot 
and I'm going to hold the shift key down to deselect that line, I cannot move this away without deforming the volume behind it. The way to be able to separate geometry is to create a group. Select, and one more thing, when I select from upper left to lower right, I select everything within that selection window. If I select from lower right to upper left, I select just what intersects that window. Select, right click, make group. There must be something else in there because the bounding box is bigger than the model. Ah, see, I captured the scale figure in there. Well, if I don't want her in there, then what I need to do is double click to open the bounding box, select and delete. All edits to the geometry in a group have to be made inside the group editing box. When I draw outside the editing box. I'm hitting escape to end that operation. The line is outside it. You can't tell just from looking at it, but it is outside. So if I were to draw some more geometry, I'm going to draw a three-point or rotated rectangle. Escape to end. Push, pull, and if I want it the height of that line, I'll just click it up to that line. Now, when you can see when I triple click to select it, just it selects, and I can move it away. It's very easy to draw things outside a group that you thought were inside the group and you don't discover that until later. If you wanted to put this part inside the group, here's how to do it. Triple click to select, go to edit, Cut, open the group, then go to Edit, Paste in Place. Perspective is the default view of a SketchUp model, and it's a three-point perspective. And if you want parallel projection, click on that. That, combined with the Views toolbar, will give you orthographic or isometric views. Some tools have nested tools in them. When I click the drop down arrow, I can access these different kinds of arcs, these different lines, these different selection tools. And I think that's enough to get you started.